Good morning, good morning, and happy Wednesday from the farm. Welcome to another episode of Thinking Outside the Soil, where I get to talk story about topics related to the farmers and ranchers using hydroponic practices to grow the crops and creatures we need to eat. And I am your host, Shani Alfalfa Seed. Thank you for being with us on this beautiful morning. I had a pleasant surprise last night while working over at the high school. A gentleman who came across my world about six months ago and had been doing some volunteer work and was doing uh, some really good jobs. Um, He came back into our world. It's a bit complicated, but I am going to share with you today a little bit more about um, Elliot and welcoming back this individual into our world. And we'll continue talking about some of the other farmers that have inspired us to do hydroponics a little bit later, but I think it's a great opportunity to be here now and in the moment. But since I've got you right now, right here, if you like what you hear or have heard in the past, follow the show. And if you could be as so kind as to leave a review and let others know why they should listen in too. Part of our mission here at Blooming Health Farms is to use STEM education, job training, and mentorship to help reduce crime in our community. And so that puts us involved with a lot of people who are getting in trouble, have been in trouble, or don't want to get in trouble. And trouble in the simplest sense means the police or the court systems. So we get a lot of individuals that come across our world that have a similar background to maybe me and that are looking to escape the revolving door of the criminal justice system. We focus on the at-risk youth between the ages of 15 to 24 for who we're specifically trying to help. But along the way, other individuals that fall slightly outside of that age reign come in and bring a lot of value and so we're looking for volunteers on a regular basis and I specifically like to cater to the individuals that are going to be able to help those youth that we're trying to work with so when I get an opportunity to meet people that have been in prison that are out of prison looking to want to do better things with their lives I will engage and dig into that a little bit more. Now, about a year ago or so, I was sitting at a farmer's market table doing our thing, and a lady who runs a local nonprofit here in Greeley, Colorado, started asking us about what we were trying to do and how we were trying to grow our company. She told me that she is running a nonprofit called The Rock Found, and it does re-entry. It provides re-entry services for people coming out of prison. There's a lot of challenges for individuals coming out of prison to get back into society, and so they focus on that. And she saw that we were trying to do similar things with youth, and we uh, bonded pretty quickly. And she told me that they were actually interested in getting a greenhouse established at their little office. And so I thought it was a perfect opportunity to go uh, learn and be of service and go help out and just give what it is we needed to give and to build a partnership and network with this other community. Now, while I was beginning to go over there and um, understand what it is they do, Several of the people who work for them and work with them uh, started asking me some of the same questions that other people ask. What are you guys doing? Why are you doing it? And, uh, you know, who are you and how are you trying to do this stuff? So I will generally share a quick backstory with people. And if you've ever been 
in trouble with the police or in the court system at all, we can say some really simple things without going into a long story. And the simple things that I tell people is that I've had a lot of mug shots and worn a lot of metal bracelets. And if you get that, then I know that I'm speaking to the right person. And if you don't, then we can have a different conversation because it's not necessarily important for you. Now, those are some of the qualifiers that we, we have to use to engage and capture some of the attention of people here. Now, one of those individuals that I first engaged with was this guy named Elliot. Elliot is, uh, he's a, he's a former, he's a felon. He's got that. And he was working with the rock found trying to get back on his feet, get back into society, get back into the community and latched on to what I was doing with the greenhouse and, um, you know, kind of jumped ship into another nonprofit to help us out with what we were doing while still honoring his commitments with the rock found. Well, there's always challenges to being somebody with a past and a criminal record. About six months ago, his past caught up to him a little bit about something that that happened. And uh, the words we like to use without shirking accountability and responsibility is, is he got caught up and got caught a bunch of trumped up charges. And one of the things that we see here in our community is that the law enforcement agencies like to charge you for not only just the charge or the crime that you've committed, but they will do their best to find as many relatable charges that they can because there's a, an awareness that when you go to the court, that some of those charges may not stick. So the cops throw as much spaghetti at the wall to try to get as much of it to stick. And uh, so back of all of that, he had done some things that had legitimately caused them to contact him. But in that effort of trying to figure it out, they trumped up, they added things on. And a lot of them were not true. And I don't expect you to take me at my word on that. You may not know me or we are uh, talking about somebody who's had a criminal past. But the reality or whatever it is, is that um, yesterday I got a phone call from him. And he said, hey, Sean, hey, Sifu, I'm free. And I was like, wait, what? And he goes, yeah, Sifu, they, 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 they dropped it. I'm free. And I was like, no way. And so we arranged um, to meet up and to start re-engaging on some of the things that we had started before. And one of those things is an opportunity for Elliot to become... Um, involved with Blooming Health Farms and his experience and skill sets are in farm management. He's worked on a farm and done a lot of that farm labor. So we are getting him back in. I'm throwing him in the muck, making him do chicken work. And this morning I got the chance to teach him uh, about our Sprouting for Success system. And it was really cool to see that in just a short amount of time for someone who hasn't been engaged with agriculture for almost six months and has been sitting in a jail cell, in only a few minutes, he was able to figure it out. Now, the true test will be tomorrow when he comes back to do it again and again and again. So we are really, really excited to see that this individual that has engaged with us has continued to engage with us i actually was writing him letters while he was in jail it's something that i just do and um so i am very very grateful i'm super excited i wanted to share with you out there in the world that there are individuals out there that don't want to be in jail that 
that that end up in jail and that are willing to do whatever it takes to become a better person. And it's fantastic to see from our perspective of somebody who engaged with us, something happened that could have seemingly set them off on a poor and bad path. And they maintained their perseverance and strength and faith and sat in jail for six months patiently in order to walk away with all, without all of those charges. And so that's why I feel confident enough to say that there were trumped up charges. And it's something that we're constantly recognizing in the world that we're going to see here in Blooming Health Farms and in the effort to shift the paradigm and change how we think about our criminal justice involved individuals and those that do get stuck in the revolving door. And we are here to say that we are using this medium of hydroponics so that we can show people how to grow food for themselves, to grow food for others, so that they can continue to grow themselves. And by doing so, we get this chance to grow our community. So I invite those of you who've been here and who are new to head on over to bloominghealthfarms.com so you can see a bit more of how we are growing food and growing people. And that is all I have for us today on this beautiful Wednesday. If you like what you hear or have heard in the past, please be so kind and leave a review so others should know why they should stay too. And if you're interested in learning more about how hydroponic fodder helps farmers save water, improve livestock quality, and become better stewards, head on over to thinkingoutsidethesoil.com. Get yourself a copy of my book. All I need is your shipping address and I will rush you a copy within a week. And thank you again for being with us on another episode of Thinking Outside the Soil. Take care and have a lovely day. Hey, before you go, check out the links below. Leave me a rating and review and follow the show. Don't forget to get yourself some of our Blooming Health Blended Sprouting Mix. Our mix has been shown to get the best eggs and create the healthiest flocks. With feed costs going up, right now's the time to lock in a subscription so that you can get the best eggs without having to go to the grocery store or the feed store anymore. Check out the links below to get yourself some Blooming Health Blended Sprouting Mix.